Are you a Christian leader or a pastor of a church? We have an important program to bless, encourage, empower you, and pray for you. Andrew Carnegie once said, No man will make a great leader who wants to do it all himself or get all the credit for doing it. Welcome to Leadership Talk, brought to you by the African Pastors Premier Educational Network, APN, where we say you are not supposed to lead alone. You're not supposed to pastor alone. And you're not supposed to preach your own words. God has brought us to help encourage you and pray for you. Now, here's the APN founder and our host, Dr. Ezra Anibu. Shalom, shalom, praise God. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, by your precious blood, we thank you for this opportunity you've given to us to minister to leaders around the world. Heavenly Father, I send your word, to heal right now any leader that's listening that's going through any type of physical challenge in their body. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the manifestation of your healing right now, emotional healing, physical healing, healing in every area of their lives, from ministry and leadership, in Jesus' name, amen. Extraordinary leaders, welcome to the APN Talk Show. I am Dr. Ezra Anyaboy, the founder of African Pastors Premier Education Network and the Chancellor of University of Leadership and Sound Doctrine. In this segment, our, our topic in this segment is the rela- discussing the relationship between leadership doctrine and leadership strategy. Praise God. By the grace of God in this segment, I will share the following five points. Point number one, we will examine briefly 67 foundational scriptures on leadership. Point number two, we will address, I will give the definition of leadership doctrine from a religious perspective. Point number three, I'll share with you a review of the leadership doctrine of Joshua and how to develop a personal leadership doctrine. Point number four, we will address what is the leadership strategy and its relationship to leadership doctrine using the case study of Joshua, a textbook. Then in point number five, will look at leadership statements in Joshua and how they can apply to your leadership. Praise God. Now, let's go to point number one, addressing the 67 foundational scriptures on leadership. So the first scripture is Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. It says, But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who, are, who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Praise God. So here you can see that discerning capable leaders and empowering them is very important in leadership. In Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, the Lord used him to help Moses organize his leadership. Praise God. So quality leadership looks for and empowers other leaders. Praise God. Now, there's some people that this uh, old saying that says, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. That saying is out of date and it is wrong. You are not a better leader if you're doing everything by yourself. So you have to empower other people, discern people around you whom God has anointed and begin to train them, equip them, and empower them. Here's the second scripture on leadership. It's from Psalm 32, verse 8. He reads, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Praise God. Now, in this scripture, you can see that developing into the kind of leader who yields to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the kind of leader who always asks God and seeks for counsel, seeks to 
hear from God before you make your decisions. Praise God. So walking with God requires an intimate, prayerful reliance upon him. Christian leadership is truly impossible if one has not made a priority to put God first. Praise God. His third scripture, the three of the 67 scriptures, is Psalm 37, from verse 3 to 4. He reads, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Praise God. So by reading the scripture, you can strive that God-fearing leaders delight in the Lord, not in materialism or in worldly possessions. Praise God. So there are so many temptations for Christian leaders. If one is not careful, one will end up putting their trust in themselves or putting their trust in their own strategy. There is this temptation for leaders who are doing very well to begin to take delight in their success and enter into pride and begin to demand praise from everyone. So it seems that the more successful you are as a leader, the more open you are to temptations of pride that lead to the stealing of God's glory. So here's the key. Successful or not, a leader's trust and delight should always be in God. Praise God. Here's the fourth scripture. Psalm 37 verse 7 reads, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Praise God. Now, many leaders are pushing themselves so hard in order to succeed and be respected and in order to and be accepted by their peers, family, or the society. A pattern of behavior that robs peace. It robs the joy of serving God, and it robs, you know, in leadership, one of the key things a leader needs to do is to make sure they define the word, they define the word success, because your definition of success is going to affect your contentment and your joy and your happiness. Praise God. So don't push yourself too hard. Learn to be still. God knows, and God wants to help you, praise God, in your leadership, because he's the one that made you a leader, praise God. Now, here's the fifth scripture on leadership. It's Psalm 37, from verse 16 to 17. It reads, Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous, praise God. So you can see that authentic leadership expresses thankfulness and gratitude and contentment. Praise God. It's difficult in Christian leadership when a leader is always thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. You need to learn to be content with what you have. Not complacent, but be content with what you have and believe God and work hard and the Lord will expand you according to the measure that he has for you. Praise God. Godly leadership understands that no one qualifies to work for God, and no one is qualified to be a God-spoke person to the congregation and to the world. So a revelation, an increased revelation of this opportunity and trust from God will always help any leader to become more humble and more thankful. Praise God. Here's scripture number six. Psalm 37, from verse 30 to 31, it reads, The mouth of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. Praise God. So godly leaders restrain themselves from speaking hastily and wickedly. Praise God. Jesus in the New Testament, tells us that the things that come out of someone's mouth must originate from their heart. 
the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So a leader needs to pay attention to the things that they say because their words are indicators. Your words indicate your level of your spirituality. Praise God. A good leader, a God-fearing leader, speaks encouraging words and not destructive words. Praise God. Here's scripture number 7, Psalm 78, verse 72. We read, And David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands he led them. Praise God. So in essence, a leader is supposed to develop their leadership and personal skills. So leadership skill is important in leadership. Praise God. Scripture number 8, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he reads, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So leaders should protect what I call their spiritual gates. They should protect their ears, their eyes, and their heart from hearing and seeing things that can blindside them and lead them away or astray from God. Praise God. So biblically speaking, the heart represents our emotional, intellectual, and moral center. So we need to protect it because as the proverb says, everything flows from that center. Our spiritual condition reveals itself in our actions. A leader must understand this and protect their spiritual gates. Praise God. Scripture, uh, here's uh, scripture number nine, which is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. It reads, For lack of guidance, a nation falls. The victory is won through many advisors. Praise God. So godly, godly leaders, you use God. See, God uses leadership to determine the course of nations. Praise God. So that's why it's very important to pray for leaders of your nation. Wherever country you live in, you must pray for the leader of your nation because whatever happens to that leader happens and affects the nation. Praise God. So you can't underestimate the power of leadership. The proverb, the writer in the book of Proverbs chapter 11 says that the nation that we're talking about here is the nation of Israel, a case study here, the nation of Israel. But he's talking about that the leadership, whatever is happening to the leader, influences the nation. The same thing happens in church leadership. So the church needs strong leadership. The church cannot stand if it has a leader that is ungodly. Praise God. Here's leadership scripture number 10. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 12, you read, Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. In other words, godly leadership is rooted in righteousness. And leading righteous leaders understand that leadership is embedded in holiness and holy living. So if you want your leadership to have deep roots, which will eventually lead to healthy fruits, you need to walk in holiness. Praise God. The Bible says that without holiness, it is impossible to see God. Here's scripture number 11. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 9, it says, Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. Praise God. So leaders are never lazy or complacent. They're constantly improving. Praise God. I always say there are three things to success anywhere. The three things are godliness, and expertise, and excellence. Praise God. Once you have that, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the the country. It doesn't matter the locale. You will excel. Praise God. You will thrive. Amen. Here is Leviticus scripture number 12. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. He reads, If you falter in a time of trouble, 
how small is your strength? In other words, leaders' strength grow and develop more in troubled times. It was uh, the late Robert Schuller that made this statement. He said, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Praise God. Here's leadership, uh, scripture number 13. Proverbs 27, from verse 23 to 24, he reads, Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds, for riches do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. Praise God. In other words, leaders pay special attention to their resources. Why? Because resources do, may not last forever. Praise God. So leaders are supposed to have a system and a structure that helps them account for things and plan for things. Proper financial planning helps leaders in avoiding financial crunch and financial crisis. Praise God. Now, it is God's leadership, one of God's leadership law and principles that he taught Joseph in the book of Exodus, is the, is, the, is the leadership principle of saving in time of plenty. Praise God. Here's leadership uh, scripture number 14. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. It reads, Wicked and self-centered leadership breeds hopelessness. The actual scripture of Proverbs 29, verse 2 says, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Praise God. So you can see that wicked and self-centered leadership causes chaos, hopelessness, demoralizes people. So bad leadership is terrible for any organization. Praise God. So God has not just called you as a leader, but he has given you tools through the Bible to strengthen your leadership. God is the ultimate leader, and God is the best leader ever. And the Bible is the best leadership book in the world. Praise God. Here is leadership scripture number 15. Is the, the scripture is Proverbs 29, verse 4. He reads, By justice a king gives a country stability. But those who are greedy for bribes tear it down. Praise God. So in other words, good leadership offers stability. Praise God. Amen. Scripture number 16, Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Praise God. Leaders, godly leaders, put their trust in God. They are not intimidated by anything or situations in life because they trust God. Praise God. It doesn't matter what the difficult situation is. Godly leaders trust God. Leadership scripture number 17 now. Isaiah 55, from verse 8 to 9, it reads, Le uh, it reads, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, praise God. So it's important in leadership for godly leaders to always remember that God initiated your leadership. It wasn't your personal goal. It wasn't your personal ambition. God selected you because he wants to select you. So praise God. So when we remember that, it helps us to recognize our limitations, that we are dependent. Godly leaders are dependent on God. Praise God. And they have a covenant relationship where they work with God. They don't work alone. Praise God. So you're not, you are fallible, you're not infallible, so that's why we have to lean on God and hold to God's word, praise God. 
Leadership scripture number 18 is Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 that reads, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Praise God. Again, this reaffirms what I said earlier, that God establishes leadership. And this is even in secular leadership, although our context is spiritual leadership. Praise God. Here's leadership scripture number 19, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. He says, call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Praise God. So, godly leadership, in godly leadership, God requires leaders to have an intimate relationship with God. Praise God. Here's leadership scripture number 20 from Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. He reads, So in everything, do to others what you will have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Praise God. This means that leadership is about justice, mercy, and humility. Praise God. Don't revenge. Don't have unforgiveness. Just treat people according to God's word. Praise God. Here's leadership scripture number 21. Matthew chapter 20, verse 26. He reads, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Praise God that leaders must practice humility. Praise God. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to list out some of the scriptures, the scriptures, the, so we can uh, get through a foundational statement and then move into the lecture. The leadership scripture from number 22 is Matthew. 24, from verse 45 to 47. The leadership scripture for number 23 is, is Matthew chapter 10, from verse 42 to 45. Praise God. Our, lead, our 24th leadership scripture is Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Praise God. Our 25th leadership scripture is Luke chapter 18, verse 27. Praise God. For those leaders uh, that are taking notes, please uh, make sure you read this, and uh, it will help you in your paper submissions. For leadership scripture number 26, is Luke chapter 22, verse 26. For leadership scripture number 27, is John chapter 3, verse 30. For leadership scripture number 28 is John 13, from verse 13 to 17. Praise God. For leadership scripture number 29 is Acts chapter 20, verse 28. For leadership scripture number 30 is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Praise God. Uh, let me take a moment and read this, Romans 8.28. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Praise God. So, in other words, no matter what the situation is, good, bad, or ugly, the Christian leader, the godly leader, has confidence and knows that God has his or her future secured so the future is bright. Praise God. Now, for leadership scripture number 31 is Romans 8, verse 31. For leadership scripture number 32 is Romans 12, from verse 3 to 8. For leadership scripture number 33 is Galatians 6, verse 9. So leadership, if Galatians 6, verse 9 is, is very important, so do not be wary in well-doing, for at the proper time you will reap if you don't give up. So if there's a leader listening to us, you're not supposed to quit, and you're not supposed to give up. Praise God. For leadership scripture number 34 is Ephesians 4, from verse 11 to 13. 
for leadership scripture number 35. Philippians 2 verse 3. For leadership scripture number 36 is Philippians 4 from verse 12 to 13. For leadership scripture number 37, it is 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24. For leadership scripture number 38 is 1 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 2 to 7. For leadership scripture number 39, it is 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. For leadership scripture number 40, it is 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Let me read this, uh, 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. It says, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Praise God. So leadership is not defined. Godly leadership is not defined by age. It is the flawless choice of God. Praise God. Now, for leadership scripture number 41, we have 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For leadership scripture number 42, we have 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 3 to 4. For leadership scripture number 43, we have 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. For leadership scripture number 44, we have 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. For leadership scripture number 45, we have Titus chapter 1, from verse 7 to 9. For leadership scripture number 46, we have Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. For leadership scripture number 47, we have James chapter 1, verse 5. For leadership scripture number 48, we have James chapter 1, verse 12. For leadership scripture number 49, we have James chapter 4, verse 10. Praise God. Now, for leadership scripture number 50, again, I'll, I'll like to reuse that Galatians 6, verse 9. It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In other words, God will reward you. Do not quit. There are You may have enemies out there that want you to quit. The devil wants you to quit. Don't quit. As long as you know that God has called you to do what you're doing, you're not supposed to quit. For leadership scripture number 51, it's Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 6. Do not neglect reading your Bible. Do not neglect reading the Word of God. Don't be deceived and distracted. A Christian leader is different from a secular leader. A secular leader succeeds by making connections and passing out their business cards. The spiritual leader succeeds by spending time with God. Praise God. Of course, all success comes from God. Now, for leadership scripture number 52, it's 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 1 to 11. Do not engage in strife in your personal life or in your leadership. For leadership scripture number 53, it's first, uh, it's first Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. A godly leader cannot be a drunk card, cannot be given to drinking alcohol. Praise God. For leadership scripture number 54, you have First Peter 5 from verse 1 to 5. For leadership scripture number 55, you have Titus chapter 1 from verse 5 to 9. Do not be quick-tempered, praise God, or someone that is inclined to anger or violence, praise God. For leadership scripture number 56 is First Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. The uh, godly leaders that are successful are generally not novice, so we use that term knowing that you do not focus on the leadership position who do not have uh, a solid track record or who do not have experience in doing the right job, in doing the job. 
Praise God. For leadership scripture number 57, we have 1 Timothy 3, from verse 1 to 7. For leadership scripture number 58, again, on the 1 Timothy 3, from verse 1 to 7, is the leader should not fall into the tricks of the devil. There, there are certain things that the devil control in the life of a leader to distract them. A godly leader should be able to discern and be able to know things that are time wasters or toxic relationships that will waste their time. Praise God. And avoid those relationships. Is a leadership scripture number 59. Praise God. First Timothy 4 verse 7. A godly leader should not be involved in spreading rumors. Praise God. Leadership scripture number 60 is 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 12. Praise God. Verse 12 to 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 2. So a, le- a godly leader should develop spiritually, work on their spiritual gift to develop it. Praise God. So leadership scripture number 61 is 2 Timothy 2.15. One of the reasons why God wants God leaders not to be lazy in studying the word of God is so that they will not be ashamed. Amen. In the, the leadership scripture number 62 is within the context of Titus chapter 1 from verse 5 to 9. So a godly leader should not be accused of dissipation. Praise God. Leadership scripture number 63, again under the context of Titus chapter 1 from verse 5 to 9, a leader, a Christian leader, should not be accused of fomenting rebellion. Praise God. Leadership scripture number 64, under the context of First Titus, chapter 1, under the context of Titus, excuse me, under the context of Titus 1, from verse 5 to 9, a godly leader should not be arrogant or self-willed. Praise God. Leadership scripture number 65, under First Peter chapter 5, from verse 1 to 5, a godly leader should not serve under compulsion. Then, leadership scripture number 66, again, within the context of 1 Peter 5, from verse 1 to 5, a godly leader should not do anything for financial reasons. Praise God. And then, number 67, which is the 67th, Leadership scripture is from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1. A godly leader should never engage in fornication, adultery, or any sexual misconduct anywhere. Praise God. Now, I took a lot of time to establish this because it is very important to the heart of God. Leadership is important to God. And when one of the things God wants his leaders to do is to develop the tenacity, the endurance, and the stamina to study the Word of God. Let's take a commercial with the preacher's pledge. I'll be back to define, to define leadership doctrine and leadership strategy. Praise God. Dear God, in Jesus' mighty name, please help me as I recite this. Sound Doctrine Preacher's Pledge Between You and Me By God's grace, I will read my Bible every single day of my life. I will live it, teach it to my spouse and children, and then teach it to the world. By God's grace, I will make the Bible my primary resource in sermon preparation and preaching. By God's grace, I understand that church members are not mine. They are God's sheep, purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. As a result, my job is to teach and live the Bible before them, love them unconditionally, and release them to God, who owns and controls them. By God's grace, 
When I stand in the pulpit, I will come prepared with the Bible, yield to the Holy Spirit, and strive to honestly proclaim God's Word. By God's grace, I will not preach what I think. I will not manipulate people with pressure for money. God is my rewarder, not man. By God's grace, I will ensure that holiness is maintained both inward and outward. I will make sure that I do not have any unconfessed sin before getting to the pulpit, and I will also make sure that holiness is maintained in the sanctuary. By God's grace, I will preach a balanced message, considering the pretext, the text, and the post-text. By God's grace, I will make sure that my sermon and practical applications can withstand biblical scrutiny. By God's grace, I will not use carnal jokes in the pulpit. I am a servant of God, not a comedian. The issue at stake is the eternal destination of people and delivering the saved from a life of bondage and oppression to an abundant life through Jesus Christ. By God's grace, I will practice humility every single day in my speech and actions as I practice the presence of God. By God's grace, I will always end my message by providing the opportunity for people to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Sinners and backsliders must be encouraged to reconcile with God. It is not by my might nor my power, but by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. This sound doctrine preacher's pledge is not for sale. It was provided to you by University of Leadership in Sound Doctrine and by the friends of Dr. Ezra Annie Ebu. ULS, Delivering Top Religious Education, www.uls.education. Praise God, Ezra, honorary leaders. This is Dr. Ezra Annie Ebu, your leadership professor at the University of Leadership and Sound Doctrine and the Chancellor of University of Leadership and Sound Doctrine. Now, we are looking at the, the uh, relationship between leadership doctrine and leadership strategy. So I've, we've done point number one, which is going over 67 uh, scriptures on leadership. Now, here's point number two. What is a leadership doctrine within the religious context? What is a leadership doctrine? Now, according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Doctrine is defined as a teaching, instruction, something that is taught, a principle or position of the body of principles in a branch of knowledge or system of belief. In essence, doctrine, the root word for doctrine is the word dogma. So a law is a principle of law established through past decisions a statement of fundamental government policy, especially in international relations. For example, in the United States, we have something called the Truman Doctrine. Doctrine is a military principle. Praise God. So now, here's our definition that we will use. Leadership doctrine is the established, unchangeable principles that a pastor received from God that God his personal relationship, God's and guides, his personal relationship with God. It is the master key to walking fully with God and for fulfilling the call of God in a pastor's or leader's life. Praise God. For example, in our textbook that we're using for this lecture, which is the book of Joshua, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 9, it reads, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, 
the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide fine inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong, and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever, whithersoever thou goest. Praise God. Now, in this text, you can see that God reveals the main call of Joshua to him, but then makes this incredible statement. In my paraphrase, God says, Joshua, I am calling you to do a military job. However, the only way you are able to succeed in doing this job is by doing the following. God says to Joshua, this is your leadership doctrine. You must read the Bible constantly. You must meditate on the words from the Bible constantly. You must talk only based on the words from the Bible constantly. You must obey whatever God tells you to do constantly. Then you will prosper, and no human being on earth can stop you in any way. Praise God. So God tells Joshua the vision, but decides to help him succeed by revealing to him the leadership doctrine the spiritual thing that he must constantly maintain in order to succeed. In other words, God says to Joshua, your success is not going to be based on your own ideas or strategies, but it is based on daily obeying the leadership doctrine that I revealed to you. Your leadership doctrine is not based on what battles come your way. Your leadership doctrine is what God says that your calling requires. Every call is different, and every call has specific timing, specific scope, specific geographical location, specific roles, specific objectives, and specific relevance in the kingdom of God, and specific anointing. Praise God. For example, Apostle Paul was called to the Gentiles, while Apostle Peter was called to the Jews. Additionally, not all leadership doctrines are revealed instantly at the time of the calling. We see the purpose of God's call, for example, to Joshua, and the leadership doctrine in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, from verse 2 to 9. However, in the book of Acts, chapter 9, we see, the, we see the apostle Paul's calling from God. And we notice in several other chapters in the scriptures that his leadership doctrine were revealed to him with time. Apostle Paul received his calling first and then learned his leadership doctrine later. We can see in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 10, Apostle Paul says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, and patience. Praise God. In the book of John, chapter 7, verse 17, Jesus says, If any man would do his will, 
he shall know, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Praise God. So one of the meanings of this statement is where Jesus was making it clear that his teachings and manner of life were dictated by God in order to fulfill a predestinated kingdom purpose. His leadership doctrine and teachings are not subject to change or subject to negotiations. Praise God. Now, before we go into point number three, here is the balance. Whatever God tells any pastor to do must be based and must be supported by the Bible, the Word of God, since God and His Word are one. Praise God. Point number three. A review of the leadership doctrine of Joshua and how to develop a personal leadership strategy. Praise God. So what is a synonymous word to doctrine is philosophy. So here's a question. What is your leadership philosophy or doctrine? How will your philosophy help you and your team in ministry and leadership? So I'll, I'm coining an, uh, this acronym. I'm coining a phrase here, an acronym for, for this lecture. I'm going to call Personal Leadership Doctrine PLD. PLD. So developing a Personal Leadership Doctrine PLD will empower you to declare the truth and stand tall within. It will help you to operate from a position of inner strength in all situations of life, knowing that you're doing the perfect will of God and that you're operating according to His will. Knowing your PLD, understanding it, embracing it, and obeying it is the key to excellence in ministry. God's definition of excellence in ministry is obedience to God, not outward things and materialism. It is important for you as a leader to understand, develop, and declare your leadership doctrine in every single relationship that you have in ministry. If you do not declare your leadership doctrine from day one, you will cause the following problems in your leadership. You will cause other leaders and even your subordinates to lead you because they will perceive you as a man or woman who can simply do anything they want, whenever they want, and however they want. Your leadership doctrine tells everyone how you operate and how you do things. You will create instability and confusion in your leadership if you do not declare your leadership doctrine, because you because people will perceive you as either weak, partial, or unstable because in certain, in certain important core issues, because in certain important core issues, they'll feel that you are not consistent and you're not constant. If you do not declare your leadership doctrine and make it known, you will open yourself up to Jezebel. And individuals with manipulative spirits and hidden agendas because your do's and don'ts are unknown. Your God given and declared leadership doctrine sets your boundaries, it creates opportunities and hinders your weaknesses. So, your leadership doctrine makes you solid spiritually and physically. When we look at the book of Joshua, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 9, we could see how God established how Joshua is supposed to first lead himself in his relationship with God and then in his relationship with other people. See, many people think that leadership is mostly focused on others and getting others to do things. But God in his word makes it clear that leadership must begin with the leader's relationship with God. Then move to who God said that you are. From there, 
you apprehend what God has called you to do for him. Leadership, doctrine, and ministry comprise the following. Your personal foundation of believing God, which is that 2 Timothy 3.16. You must never compromise with the word of God. Your specific encounter with God and his personal instructions to you. God does not believe that anyone loves him unless they obey him. Praise God. So you can see the essence, the price tag of obedience. In the book of John, chapter 2, verse 5, you can see how the mother of Jesus, Mary, whom Jesus allowed, to whom Jesus came through, told the people in the marriage feast of Cana. She said to them this phrase, whatever Jesus Christ tells you to do, do it. That's how they succeeded in receiving their miracle. Praise God. Your leadership doctrine reveals a focused, particular system of thinking and living. Praise God. It sets you apart because God has called you to do a specific job for him. Your PLD is your foundation. It is establishing a solid core. It helps you to have leadership clarity, which guides your decision and focuses, helps you to focus in sorting out all the competing inputs you get in a given day. Praise God. Leaders do not, leaders that do not have the leadership doctrine clearly defined. Leaders who do not understand the leadership doctrine will find themselves wanting to copy everyone else. And they will never be happy in life, no matter the height of success that they ever attain. Praise God. Consider this statement. Successful leaders know their PLD, and they communicate it by living it passionately every day in all they say and do. They have taken the time to determine who they are, their values, and their priorities. They know their course, and they have set their internal compass, which gives them greater self-knowledge and greater self-confidence and improves effectiveness as leaders. This is accomplished by writing a personal leadership doctrine, which states the core values that you live by, what God told you to do, and how you are to do it, and keep on doing it until God says otherwise. Praise God. So how do you develop your leadership doctrine? Since How do you develop it? Since it, God called you and gave you the leadership doctrine, if it's not really your idea, the main thing is to write it down. Write down what God told you when he called you. Study it every day. Read it every day. Become resolute in it. You see, by having a leadership doctrine, it helps you in developing stable values. Otherwise, people won't know what you stand for. Your leadership doctrine helps you to affirm the following, what you truly believe. Which values do you refuse to compromise on? How comfortable are you with who you are? What causes you to have these core values? What is the single most important thing for you? Putting in writing the leadership, your leadership doctrine provides clarity, objectivity. It shows that you're serious. It helps you to make a solid commitment in serving God. Praise God. And it helps in keeping you consistent and it allows you to self-check and do an evaluation. Praise God. So you see, your doctrine is inextricably interwoven with your understanding and concept of leadership because your leadership doctrine is your foundation. Praise God. So now, here's point number four. What is the leadership strategy and its relationship with leadership doctrine? You see, leadership strategy is important in ministry. Without strategy, organizations tend to either maintain the status quo, make incremental improvements, or become distracted by involving themselves in many things that are not in line with their vision from God. So strategic 
defining is the process by which key leaders of a church organization envision its future and develop the necessary procedures and operations to achieve that future, the concept of strategic management builds on this definition of strategic planning. So you have to understand that you can't really do planning alone. Strategic planning requires a leadership coalition. It requires that the leaders take time to think. It requires courage to make decisions. So in the book of Joshua, you could see that when God told Joshua to defeat, to take over Jericho, God gave him a strategy that in the natural sense that was outrageous, but it was his relationship with God, his leadership doctrine that helped him to carry out that strategy. Praise God. Now, in the in looking at the strategic skills of Joshua, there's this piece from, um, it was really a copyright from Emerson Thomas Macmillan. He, he talks about the grand strategy that Joshua used to invade, the, to intervene and help the Gibeonites when five kings conspired to take them, up, take them down. Your leadership doctrine helps you. So here's what I'm saying so far. Christian leadership is different from secular leadership because Christian leadership begins with God. God calls you, God tells you how he wants you to relate with him, and then God tells you how he wants you to do the ministry. For the sake of time, we will continue this uh, segment later. But for now, I want to take a minute. Maybe there's someone listening to me and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Would you pray this prayer with me right now? Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Please, Lord, save me now and make me a child of God. Amen. Maybe you're a leader out there and you're saying, I don't know my leadership doctrine. I, don't, I haven't even paid attention to it. Listen, I want you to take time and go and pray. And begin to go back to what God told you when he called you. Write it down and begin to read it every day, and begin to read the Word. God is going to help you because He loves you. Praise God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. Amen. We give God all of His praise, and thank you for joining us for the APN Talk Show. We also thank our reputable guest, for sharing and blessing God's people. Please remember that APN is here for you, and you can support this ministry by becoming an APN partner, helping us to train one million African pastors. Just go to our website and click on Become an African Pastors Partner. Our website is www.train1millionpastors.com. That's www.train-o-n-e-millionpastors.com. Once again, the website is www.train1millionpastors.com. APN, Africa's Super Network. <laughs>